Meteor showers are one of the best events to see in the night sky, regardless of whether you're a stargazing beginner or an expert astronomer. To make sure that you get the most out of each and every shower, we've brought you our top tips to getting the most out of meteors. But first, what actually causes a meteor shower? Meteor showers happen because Earth passes through a stream of debris and dust that's been left behind by a comet, or in a couple of cases, an asteroid. When these pieces of debris hit Earth's atmosphere, they are travelling at thousands of kilometres per hour, and that causes the air to glow white hot, and we see that as a meteor or a shooting star. Meteor showers occur at the same time every year as Earth passes through a particular debris field. Now you might be wondering how many meteor showers actually are there, and there's about 20 or so throughout the year. So how many meteors should you expect to see in any shower? Not all meteor showers are created equal. Some are much more prolific than others. Astronomers use something called the zenithal hourly rate, or ZHR, to help gauge how many meteors you could expect to see. The ZHR, however, should be taken with a pinch of salt. It's the number of meteors you'll see under perfect conditions if you're looking directly upwards and there's no light pollution in the night sky. In truth, you're probably going to see a lot less. That still means you're going to be able to see a meteor, hopefully, once every couple of minutes, so it's definitely worth looking out for all the same. So, what do you need to make sure you catch every meteor you can? Here are our top eight tips to meteor spotting. And if you want to get even more stargazing tips, do be sure to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. Number one, be prepared. You don't need a fancy telescope or even binoculars to see a meteor shower. In fact, your best instrument to see them with is your eyes, because they can take in much more of the night sky at once. Some things you might want to bring with you, though, is a stargazing chart or an astronomy app to help you find your way around the night sky, a notebook to record any observations you might make, and a red light torch to help you find your way around. Number two, stay comfortable. Meteor shower watching involves a lot of time on your feet and looking up at the night sky. That can be quite tough on your neck. A way to get around that is using something like a sun lounger to lie back and look up at the night sky. It can also get pretty cold pretty quickly. Make sure that you bring a lot of snacks, a hot drink and wrap up nice and warm so you don't get too cold throughout the evening. Number three, find a good place to observe. Light pollution can wash out some of the dimmer meteors. So if you can, try and get away from towns and cities. Though always make sure that it's somewhere safe and that you have permission to be there after dark. If getting away isn't an option though, don't worry. You can still observe from a park or even your back garden. Try to get away from as much light pollution as you can, turn off your house lights and make sure that any street lighting that's around is hidden behind a fence or trees. Number four, decide when to observe. The best time to observe a meteor shower is on midnight of the night of the peak. However, sometimes the weather has other ideas. So always check the weather forecast because you might find you'll have much clearer skies a day or two beforehand, which will let you see more. You'll also want to pay attention to the moon as the bright moon can wash out some of the dimmer meteors. So you might be better off observing just before it rises or after it's set. Number five, preserve your night vision. Our eyes become more sensitive to the dark as time goes on. It takes a little patience though, as it takes our eyes 30 minutes to fully adapt to the dark. But be warned, even a momentary glimpse of a bright white light can undo all of that hard work. So make sure you've got your red light torch on you and your phone set to red light mode, as that will help preserve your dark vision. Number six, find your meteor showers radiant. The radiant is the point on the night sky where all of the meteors from a particular shower appear to come from. The constellation that the radiant lies in is usually what gives a meteor shower its name. Before you begin observing, make sure you find your meteor shower's home constellation on the night sky. That way you can trace your meteor path back and make sure that it comes from that radiant and it is actually part of the meteor shower you're trying to look at. Number seven, look away from the radiant. 
It might sound counterintuitive, but looking directly at the radiant is quite difficult to see meteors as they're coming directly at you. Instead, you want to look about 20 to 40 degrees any side of the radiant, as that's where you're going to see meteors with the longest tails that will be the easiest to see. Try and find a patch of sky that's free of trees, buildings, or anything else that will obscure your view, and then look about two thirds of the way up. That's where you're going to find the darkest conditions. Number eight, bring a friend. Stargazing by yourself can be a lonely activity. And if you're in a dark rural location by yourself, a little bit unnerving as well. Fortunately, meteor showers are a great group activity. You can compete against each other to see who can find the most meteors, record your observations in turn, or just keep each other company. And that's everything you need to know to start observing meteor showers. If you're planning on going out this weekend, please do leave a comment down below to let us know how you got on. And if you want even more astronomy advice, pick up a copy of BBC Sky at Night magazine, where we have all of the best stargazing tips and a monthly sky guide telling you everything worth looking up for in the night sky. So from all of us here at BBC Sky at Night magazine, goodbye.